the April 20th, 2022 Batavia Plan Commission and Zoning Board meeting is called to order. Roll call, please. Parms? Here. Joseph? Here. Gosselin? Here. Moore? Here. Peterson? Here. And Lalonde? Here. We have six in attendance. Great, thank you. Any items to be removed, added, or changed? Nothing to be added, removed, or changed. Thank you. Uh, next up, we've got uh, minutes from the March 16th uh, Plan Commission and Zoning Board meeting and February 16th uh, Plan Commission meeting. Any questions or comments on the minutes? No. And oh. from Joseph. If there, <laughs> if there are no uh, changes or anything, we'd need a motion to uh, approve the meeting minutes for those two meetings. This is so moved. Second. Roll call, please. Parms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. And Lalonde? Yes. Carried six to zero. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a drive through restaurant uh, for Mocha Coffee um, at 132 Independence Drive. Um, I believe we need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Lalonde? Yes. Parms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. Moore? Moore? Yeah. Peterson? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, staff report, please. Sure. Um, uh, as, as you uh, mentioned, uh, Children and Gazlin, uh, tonight's a public hearing for uh, the proposed Mocha drive through restaurant at 132 Independence Drive. Uh, this would be a public hearing for a conditional use for the drive through and uh, you would be conducting design review this evening. <clears throat> um, Scott Miller with Miller Coffee Property LLC has applied for uh, that conditional use and drive through to uh, establish uh, this use on the property. Uh, basically, the property has been vacant since it was platted in 1994. Uh, it is zoned CC, which is community commercial, which does allow a drive through restaurant with a conditional use. Uh, and uh, what's proposed is a 1,421 square foot uh, restaurant at the southeast end of the site. Uh, that's so it's right here on the, the drawing here. Uh, and uh, it would have a uh, ordering or, or, or basically customers would drive up to the drive in window to order. Uh, there's two access points on the property, both aligned with uh, the Shell and Taco Bell uh, restaurants across the street. Uh, the, there is a sidewalk shown across the full extent of the property. Uh, and uh, there's 14 spaces where with the given um, <clears throat> size of the building, 11 spaces are required. Uh, the, proper, the owner does not currently propose to subdivide the property, uh, but in the future, uh, there could be a division of the property to develop the, the course side. Uh, the proposed architecture for the building um, is a uh, split of uh, cement siding and uh, uh, colored uh, stone veneer or limestone colored veneer. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, this does require conditional use. Uh, the applicant does propose or uh, having orders taken at the order box. Uh, there's no proposed audio or speaker system for the, the uh, drive through. Uh, there's an ordering menu before you get to the window to see what they have. Uh, but like I said, ordering is taken at the window. Uh, and then there's uh, space for five vehicles, a queue 
uh, and then I, as identified later in the report, uh, there's the ability for cars then to queue on site before getting to Independence Drive. Um, overall, um, as I mentioned in the report, uh, staff is supportive of the uh, requested design review and conditional use. Uh, we do think that this uh, allows for uh, uh, use of the property in a way to really uh, adapt to the uh, size of it. Uh, they do, uh, they do uh, uh, basically meet the required, um, uh, well, the required setback uh, for drive-throughs. Drive-throughs require a 50-foot uh, setback for um, from residential, uh, which this would comply <clears throat> with that requirement. Um, the uh, as I mentioned, because they are oaring at the window, that reduces the potential for noise impacts as well, um, as well as I mentioned the uh, the ability queue. Um, we do, we do believe that uh, this wouldn't <coughs> excuse me wouldn't have an effect on uh, the uh, surrounding properties in terms of traffic flow because of how the, the uh, sites laid out. Um, the uh, as mentioned in the report also is. Uh, you know, the other aspect of this is design review. Uh, the proposed design does include several of the criteria for um, uh, the C or the plan commission's uh, criteria for commercial and institutional uh, developments. Uh, so there's canopies over the ordering stations. Uh, the downspouts are limited to the rear of the, the uh, facade um, and all of the equipment would be ground mounted. Uh, the landscaping does comply with our requirements. It does provide screening of the drive-through and parking areas along Independence. Uh, there's a mix of trees along the rear property line to provide some additional screening uh, along the residential properties. Um, there is a dumpster enclosure uh, designed to match the materials of the building. Um, and uh, the uh, exterior mechanicals are also screened with landscaping as well. Uh, the, the applicant did provide a lighting plan uh, that does show uh, lighting levels to be at zero at the adjacent property line. Uh, there are, there's a proposed monument sign with the uh, uh, project. Uh, the proposed location uh, does not currently conform to the required 10 foot setback. Uh, so we do recommend including a condition of approval to uh, adjust for that. Um, and uh, th that can be a condition for staff approval. Uh, as well as we do recommend the inclusion of a staff approval final engineering uh, with the uh, with the application as well. Uh, we did include the findings uh, for you to consider for tonight. Uh, and um, so we do recommend that you do conduct and uh, hold the public hearing for the conditional use permit. Uh, and you should do the concurrent review for design review uh, with the hearing. Uh, once you uh, uh, finish those, uh, we do recommend you close the public hearing and we do recommend the following actions be taken. Uh, for the conditional use, it's to first adopt the uh, findings of approval for conditional use. Uh, then we do recommend uh, city council uh, approval or the plan commission recommend city council approval uh, of the conditional use permit for Scott Miller and Mocha Miller Coffee Property LLC to operate Mocha Coffee uh, with a conditional use uh, in conformance with the plans before you tonight, uh, subject to the conditions of relocation of the ground sign uh, to a conforming setback of 10 feet and uh, final approval of staff engineering, or staff approval of final engineering. Uh, and then we do recommend uh, adoption of the findings for design review and then approving uh, the design review subject to those same conditions in the conditional use. That's okay, thank you, Drew. I believe uh, Mr. Miller is in attendance. Um, uh, any presentation or comments or anything from uh, the applicant? Um, I'm happy to answer whatever questions I can. I can give you just a quick 30, 60 second thumbnail if you like. Um, sure. Our <clears throat> We currently have a store in North Aurora and this would be our second store and probably our last one because it's a lot more work than we ever would have thought. And my wife Jeanette's right here, she can attest to that. She and I do this together. We, we live about a mile and a half from this location. Um, I don't know, are you able to see my mouse? Probably not on on here, right? I don't have, 
and not currently. Um, I don't need. I don't need to. But I can, okay, I can. I can highlight things if you'd like. Sure. Um, only to say the, the everything that I think I understood you to say, um, Drew, when you were explaining the one little difference is that. Um, you know, we designed this so that the cars would come through the front of the store to be as far away as possible from the, the neighbors in to the east. Um, but also the the ordering, it would happen at that drive up window, which is where car number one is, if there's no line. But if there is a line, we have someone go out and take an order in person at the car about where that menu board is and beyond, depending on the situation. So we, we continually go out uh, unless it's really, really bad weather, we go out and, and greet the customer, take their order at their car in person, answer questions. We try to really focus on customer service. That's that's what we're all about is obviously we want to have a great product, but we also want to um, really be available for that interaction. That's what the business model is is kind of all about. And so, but I mean, you, you kind of said everything, what we're trying to do, and it's just, we live close by. We want to have a strong presence there ourselves and be part of it not just uh this isn't just an investment for us it's a it's our uh hobby for the rest of our days most likely and uh mm -hmm. we really enjoy it it's a lot of fun um and we think it's a great location for the community because it's pretty mm -hmm. accessible from randall whether it's wilson or maine and the high schools nearby we think is great we think yeah. having that sidewalk all the way along is going to be good for um you know walkers and bikers and the the community in general and um so yeah we're we're excited about this prospect and um i know it's a it's a lot of there's a lot of grass there to mow <laughs> but, uh, we will make that work <laughs> we've learned a lot from our first um the first store about what we would do different and this this site incorporates a lot of things that we think are going to be an advantage both to us, the business, um, our employees, and the community, just from a flow standpoint. So, but anyway, um, we're we're here to answer any questions we can, or or talk about whatever you like. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do the commissioners have any questions of the applicant or of staff? Uh, this is Sarah. Um, because you're on Randall Road and hours are different or your what are your hours going to be um we expect to have the same hours as our current store and that's generally um with the exception of holidays um or real bad weather sometimes we'll close early and send people home if it's if it's terrible but um generally 5 30 to 8 o'clock monday through friday and then saturday um six to eight and then sundays seven to five. Oh, but good good <laughs> yes yes a lot of hours um yeah so we uh we typically have anywhere from uh two to seven people on staff at a time and we have approximately 25 people on staff at our current store i would expect mm -hmm. this to be um you know pretty similar yeah this is this is this is sue peterson i don't have any questions but my comment is that i'm very excited. I was very excited to see this proposal. I'm quite familiar with your store in, in North Aurora. In fact, I make it a destination some days. Nice. And uh, it's it's a wonderful product and, and your service is, is grand and I, and I like your business plan. Um, so I have no, no questions, no problem. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This is Sarah, me too, ditto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, just for the just for those that are here today, we did send out, you know, when we send the public notice out, um, we did choose to send kind of a letter and a narrative just describing the business and who we are. And we did send it to um, all the renters that we could find a name and address for along the, the first street there uh, to the mm -hmm. east. Um, and we did get a couple of email responses because I invited them to ask questions and contact me and just had a couple people that were just commenting. They were excited to be um, so close by, um, so there wasn't anything negative so far from that. Um, so that was encouraging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Any of the other commissioners, any questions, comments? Yeah, Joseph has a question. Uh, I would like to know, um, now this, on this, what's being shown now, it looks like there is an actual building there. 
is that what is going to be on the property for, for the um, drive through the drive up? Yeah, uh, yeah, Joan, I can I can highlight where it would be on the building uh, or where the building is located. Um, okay. So I guess on the landscape plan, it's this outline here. Oh, okay. Uh, where the, the building is at. Um, so that's uh, yeah. so your east elevation think, okay. or your, excuse me, your west west elevation, the, which is facing right. the drive through, is this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the rear yeah. facing um, the uh, the residential to the east, and then the south where the ordering box is, and the north um, where there's some entries for uh, the, the building. Okay. I know it says proposed building there, but I wasn't sure if it meant it was proposed in the future or if it was going to be built now. But there's not going to be any inside um, patient. I mean, patient, sorry, <laughs> inside, inside uh, clients, right? There are patrons that come in and drink coffee there. Right. We're, we're, we're um, as Scott again, we're going to have um, a patio and it's going to be not so much a sit down uh, table and chairs, but more like a park kind of feel, but it's a drive up only and a walk up window and there's no indoor seating. And that's, okay. how, that's how most of the... Um, Mocha stores are up north. There's a, a chain of stores in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and they're all owned by one lady. And she has let us partner with her to have our own store, uh, our own Illinois space. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, with, thank you. With COVID on the rise, it's worked out well to focus on the drive-through because, you know, indoor seating is is um, a little bit challenging these days, and we don't know for just how long, but. Um, and then having an option to sit outside when it's nice and hopefully a place for Batavia fireworks to kind of hang out it might be nice. Oh, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> yeah, so, and that space has been there since you know I can remember. Um, and the more that Jeanette and I looked at it, we just feel confident that it's a, it's a good location for the business and it's a great location for us being close by. Mm -hmm. And for the community, yeah. Uh, Tom, I have some questions. Great, thanks, Tom. Um, first of all, uh, just comments. I, I think it's an overall appealing building. Uh, I, I'm familiar with the one in North Aurora, though I haven't visited it. I'll certainly visit this uh, if and when it gets built. Um, and I think it's a good use for this property. It's an odd shaped piece of property, kind of long and narrow. And I think you've done a good mm -hmm. job of figuring out uh, kind of best use. Uh, some of my comments are, I see you have an outdoor seating area that's on the south side of the building, which is opposite of where all the parking is. And I was just curious if you considered a mere footprint of the building where the walk-up window was on the north side, it would not only put it closer to the parking, it would also put it in a potential opportunity maybe to get some shade from the south sun. Um, but that's just a comment of mine. It's something maybe you want to consider. We thought about that. Um, the reason we designed it the way we did, um, obviously the, the shade is a challenge um, as we've learned from our current store. Our architect, um, Mike Elliott, he's been great. He is working on a shade solution for the south side to have some okay. kind of a a sale or something, but we kind of intentionally wanted the patio to be more designed for walkers and bikers uh, because it's really not designed to be a destination point for for cars. It's really designed to be. We we have the walk up windows with the with the the person on foot and on bike in mind, you know, or or the mom with the stroller, and so um, okay, that was the thinking for the south side. Okay, understood and. So the parking is really to meet the zoning requirements, and for staff because we will have, yeah. um, you know, we we have eleven spaces in our current store, and we often have them all all used up. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting to know. I was going to suggest that uh, you go to the minimum number of stalls here and bank, you know, maybe bank some land and just eliminate a little bit of pavement uh, instead of having you know, as many stalls as you have. And then I think the, the handicap parking is kind of in a 
I think a not a good location. It's as far as you can get pretty much from the uh, walk up window. I was wondering if you would want to move the handicap stall to the far end of the diagonal parking spaces and then put a striped crosswalk across the um, drive to get them to the sidewalk, correct? We, we did think about that some. Part of the, it, it's challenging to have a handicap space convenient most anywhere on this mm -hmm. layout. But part of the reason we put it, I think, what, and, and Drew, if I'm missing something, let me know. But I mean, I, I'm not Drew, I'm sorry, not Drew, I'm Nick. Uh, but the, this, the diagonal parking where you're talking about, if we had a handicap across We'd be, we'd be crossing the line of cars would be one concern. So having it on the north side, at least it's out of the way of a line of cars as much as any other spot we could think of. Okay. Um, and because usually people won't be parking and going to, let's say, the walk-up or the patio, um, there's, there's not very many times that people would be parking in the first place other than employees. It would be kind of unusual. In general, right. it mm -hmm. would be, but it is since it's a required space, uh, you know, the intent is typically get it as close to the entrance or point of use as mm -hmm. possible. Yeah, um, I understand your logic there. Uh, I see the the bike racks are in the pavement and it, it appears to me that the pavement goes around the rear of the building. So people who would be parking there and walking to the to the uh, pedestrian window would have to go through the bike racks or is there, is that the logic there? I don't think the bike racks are, are probably quite as big as they look on this, on this okay. drawing is my guess, but also because the, we want to have the pavement pavement to some patio on that North side, because um, even someone on foot on the sidewalk, they might come through the parking lot and want to be able to get to the other side if they're coming from the North. Right. Um, versus, you know, but mm -hmm. the, the, the bike rack, we definitely don't want it to be in the way of any pedestrians. It'll be, yeah. it'll be out of the way enough to not be a problem. And we may, might even consider putting it on the other side, on the property uh, patio side, yeah. on the south side. Actually, that might make more sense uh, when you think about it. If anybody's going to come by bike, most likely they'd come to that side of the building. Yeah, we're just trying to think of a way that we could have it available, but be somewhat out of the way for people sitting on the patio. But at the same time, you know, I don't, I'm not sure where the very best spot is for that. But maybe we should have one on both ends, you know, so they're um, in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's a there's a good chance you could get a fair amount of bike traffic just because, um, you know, a lot of the people are being coming from the residential areas to the east in high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The the coffee drinking high schoolers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, these are minor things, but landscape plan. I would suggest that maybe there's a few more trees along the east property line that extend to that proposed future subdivision line. It looks like you stop, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 feet short of that, and it actually would leave a portion of the parking exposed to people on the east side well and remember too that that whole east side is a pretty tall fence right now that goes along the whole entire entire thing i i saw that and that fence is um that's not on your property that's on the residential side i believe that's right it looks yeah, like yes. what, is that an eight foot fence it's it may even be more it's pretty tall yeah um, you notice that yeah so maintenance of that would be their responsibility. Right. Okay. Well, again, um, to staff in your final review, I, I would suggest that maybe a couple more trees on that side uh, that would extend to the north. Um, and again, I'm sure this goes to final engineering, but the, the downspouts would be connected underground. I guess I'm asking staff. Uh, typically, they would be. Um, I don't have the utility plan here, but I, I believe that would be the case. I'm Nick or Amelia can respond to that. Yes, Nick Barchetto here with ERA, uh, site engineer for the project. 
Uh, the downspouts would be releasing into, we have a BMP rain garden uh, as shown on the landscape plan there. Oh. Uh, to the east of the uh, driveway there and the sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. That's how we're gonna handle the BMPs. Uh, so the, everything on the site will actually kind of drain into that. And then uh, the overflow would release south towards the catch basin um, that's on site already. And we'll deal with the overland flow that way. Okay, um, I just wanna make sure that the downspouts weren't dumping onto the rear sidewalk. Right. And I do right. believe. Yeah, th those would be underground for sure. Okay. And I think uh, if I remember right, the, the roof is pitched a little bit to the east. Is right. That right. Nick, I think it is. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Makes the drainage simple. And then you mentioned that uh, there'll be no rooftop units in the narrative from staff. Um, so I assume they're internalized. Then you have what uh, grade mounted condensing units? Well, there will be a couple of units that would be on the back wall, on the east wall, because that wall won't have any windows and it's, um, yeah. There, yeah there's, so uh, be, those are like the water pumps for the HVAC, I think. Oh, okay. okay. I thought I saw something related, referring to grade mounted units. The uh, they know mechanical equipment here. Um, we don't have the mechanic, mechanical drawings that refers to yet, um, but I, I believe that they're basically those are the units that you do see on the site plan. Uh, okay, I just uh, didn't see any grade okay. mounted condensing units, and you know, therefore uh, the the proposed or required screening. So I assume again, staff would catch that in the final uh, administrative review. Right. So yeah, they do have this uh, shrub line along here. So that would basically provide the effective screen for that um, uh, to, yeah. to, the, to, the, to the east. Okay. All right. And then um, final question, since this is a facility used by the public, even though there's no indoor space, uh, what is the code requirement for um, restroom facilities? Is, is there no requirement? I can answer that. Um, yeah, there is not. Um, okay. They're only required to have public facilities if they provide indoor seating. So, okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, some great points there. Anyone else with questions for applicant or staff? I have a question, Amy. Great. Um, I know that um, you're putting the sidewalk all the way along the street, which is wonderful. And I imagine you will get a lot more high school kids than you do at your North Aurora location. Had you guys considered putting another sidewalk along the north end of the pro property line from so that people could access it? I mean, because my guess is if you're walking from the north, you're probably just going to walk through the parking lot. Um, I know you've got some landscaping on the north end of the you know, at the north side of the parking lot, but you had you considered putting another sidewalk there that would tie in with the one near the trash bin that ends up near the trash bin so that people wouldn't have to just walk through the parking lot. You know, I know they could walk all the way down the sidewalk to the other connection. Um, I don't know if high school kids will do that. <laughs> so I was just wondering if you had considered that or not. Well, if, if they choose to walk across the grass, that's no one's going to be bothered by yeah. that. But okay. if, if they're concerned mostly about safety, obviously the south end is going to be the the shortest distance to cross anything um, and the least amount of cars because there's usually somebody parked at the at the window and visibility is good. But we've not talked about putting a sidewalk on the north end just probably because, you know, already having put in putting in a sidewalk along the whole 1.6 acres is kind of a, a big investment for us as it is. And um, we just we just hadn't gone there, haven't thought of that. Okay, I was just curious if you had thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, you guys do obviously do a great job in North Aurora. Sometimes there's a lot of people going in and out there. And I'm not a coffee drinker, but I thank you for having one of the two best hot chocolates in the Fox Valley area. <laughs> uh, we gotta That's ask what, what I get. <laughs> Well, it's also in Batavia. I'll just put that. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> 
Well, I will say we do have a lot of um, people come to the other store, but Route 31 is a real challenge. You know, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Zero yes. And it's busy and it's, you know, IDOT, they, they took away a lot of our access when we wanted to go in there and they made it kind of a challenge. Um, it is a challenge and that that's one of the things we liked about this property is that um, it's a it's a much safer um, yes. place to get in and out of car wise. It just is North Aurora. We, we love the traffic, yeah. but it's it's a little dicey sometimes. Right, right. Well, you guys have been creative with, you know, your driveway around the building on both sides that, you know, I'm sure you had to be really creative to try and get all those cars in there. We, but we sometimes try. they do really line up. We try, but it also is a little bit of a challenge that once you're on what we call it the racetrack that goes around the building, there's a good stretch of it you can't get out because it's just one lane. Yeah. And so right. here there won't be anybody that would really be trapped if they really needed to get out. Mm. Right. Good. And you and you do train your employees very well. Um, you know, they are super polite kids usually that that wait on me. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, that's great. We mm -hmm. we try hard and we do um we do hire some kids that are pretty young and we feel that we want to really invest. Uh, we want to develop these kids because we've watched, you know, and, and Jeanette does a great job, especially with, with tra training as, as, as a lot of our people do. But when you see kids that come in there and some of them are pretty timid that they, they don't have a lot of um, people skills um, experience talking with adults of all kinds. And when they do it day in and day out, they get pretty good at it and it builds a lot of confidence yeah. with them and, and uh, people skills are kind of the, you know, really important. So. Yep. No, you guys do a great job. Thank you very much. So welcome to Batavia. What are you going to say? Oh, I was just going to, to add that we are also really selective with hiring. So even though we will hire young, we definitely are looking for applicants that are, are desiring to interact with others and, and grow, grow and serve. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Um, any other questions on either conditional use or design review um, from the commissioners? If not, um, Drew, anything from the public, any emails or anyone raising their hand? Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just make the statement that, yeah, if, if, if anybody in the public that is watching tonight wishes to address the commission with questions or make a statement, if you can just uh, raise your hand with the Zoom button to show that and we will uh, activate your microphone. Uh, and I will check to see if there's any uh, emails. Uh, I did not have any emails prior to the meeting and uh, I'm not seeing any additional ones at this point. So again, if, yeah, if, any, if anybody wants to address the commission, if you can just uh, show that you want to do so by raising your hand with the, the raise hand button in Zoom. Give them a minute. I just wanted to say I, I love that you're finally able to do something with this parcel. I drive by all the time and for, gosh, 20, 30 years I've been wondering what would fit in here. So good work. <laughs> Drew, if... Um, no one's raising their hand. Then if and yeah, I, further, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm still not seeing anybody with their hand raised at this point. Uh, although Joan's hand is raised, but I don't think she yeah, was okay. continuing to do that. No, it was accidental. There, I just took it off. <laughs> then, if there are no other questions for staff. Um, or the applicant, uh, Drew, if I'm correct, would we need a motion to close the public hearing? Correct. Jo Joseph, will so, Joseph will so move. Moore will second. Roll call, please. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. And harms. Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Great, thank you. Um, then unless anyone has anything else, I think next up would be the findings on the conditional use permit. Um, which are on page two of the memo, uh, one through four. Um, hopefully everyone's read through those. Um, and does anyone um, have any comments or I guess anyone in disagreement with uh, the findings as written by staff? 
No, they look if, good. Okay, great. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, no, no comments. Okay. Then I think we can vote on all four of them in the whole. I would need a motion uh, to adopt the findings, the conditional use findings as drafted by staff. This is harm so moved to, to accept the conditional use findings. Second. Roll call, please. Harms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gosselin? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. And Lalonde? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Thank you. Um, next up would be a motion to re recommend city council approval of the conditional use permit for Scott Miller and Miller Coffee Property LLC to operate a Mocha Coffee drive through restaurant at 132 Independence Drive in general conformance to the plans attached to the memo subject to the two following conditions. A, relocation of the ground sign to a conforming setback of 10 feet and B, staff approval of final engineering. Mm -hmm. Moore will second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Joseph? Aye. Gasland? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. And Harms? Yes. Motion carries to zero. We then have the findings, uh, the design review findings, uh, one through five as drafted by staff. Um, anyone, was everyone, I guess, does anyone uh, have any comments? Or are you um, uh, in disagreement as, with the findings as drafted by staff? No. 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 Good. Then if there are no objections to the design review findings um, as drafted by staff, we'd need a motion to adopt the design review findings one through five as drafted by staff. So, so moved. Second, second Peterson. Uh, we have a motion and a second roll call, please. Lalonde? Yes. Harms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. Moore? Yes. And Peterson? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Thank you. Then last up would be a motion to approve design review for Mocha Coffee at 132 Independence Drive in conformance uh, to the plans approved for the conditional use subject to city council approval of the conditional use and the following two conditions. Uh, a, relocation of the ground sign to a conforming setback of 10 feet, and B, staff approval of final engineering. So moved, Joseph Peterson. Moved. Joseph second. Roll call. Peterson? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Harms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. And more. Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Great, thank you. Look forward to it. Um, any idea when um, you guys might be planning on certain construction on it? Um, our best guess right now is we're hoping to start in June um, if everything goes smoothly. And then um, one of the things we're running into is just getting some of the equipment is a little bit challenging. Oh, uh, um, yeah because of supply chain issues, but our hopes would be we start construction in June if everything is approved and that we would be wrapped up sometime in the fall so that we can get going before it gets too cold. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yes, good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so. And I'll say oh, maybe, please. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, we would have this, this scheduled for committee review on May 10th. Good. Great. Thanks, Drew. 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Next up on our agenda is the continuation of the public hearing for amendments to the text of the zoning code. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm correct, that meeting is currently still open. Uh, we don't need any motion to um, uh, reopen it. We can just continue with the discussion, correct? I think that would be- No, there, there should be a motion to, um, to reopen the public hearing. Okay. Thank you, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. So let's just do that. Would anyone like to make a motion to reopen the public hearing uh, for uh, uh, continued from, I think it was the March 11th meeting? Uh, 16. Um, 16th. March 16th, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the date of the memo uh, for amendments to the text of the zoning code. Uh, I move to open the public hearing. Peterson? Second. I will land uh, roll call, please. Peterson? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Harms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Gosselin? Aye. And Moore? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Okay, so I guess. Um, First off, um, Joel, any update, any additional information, anything new from staff on these? Uh, no, uh, the hearing ended with the commission stating that it wanted more time to digest all of it. So we're ready to pick up the conversation where it left off. Okay, great. Then I'll open it up to, and I know we had voted on the one amendment, um, uh, but the rest of these remained open, so I just open it up to, well, um, perhaps we do want to take these in order. So I'm looking through uh, proposed amendment, um, attached garage setback, if I'm correct, that was voted on at the last meeting. Yes. Okay. So we're good on that. Um, reading through the memo, uh, from the last meeting. Next up, I have towing establishments. So I don't know if the uh, commissioners have any additional questions or comments or thoughts on that, on towing. What was the one you said, Tom? I, I didn't hear you. So for towing establishments, oh, I'm oh. looking back at the memo dated March 11th on page one. Okay, it's on the screen, right? Yeah, okay. Yes, I, I have it open to the proposed amendment or proposed yeah. changes. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, after looking at that again, Tom, um, I don't have any questions. I think it's fairly clear what's being proposed and I'm in favor of the changes. Yeah, Joseph agrees. So does more. I mean, yeah. I did it first. Go ahead. And I think um, it sounds like um, the general consensus, um, perhaps unanimous on towing establishments, is that um, uh, we're in support of the amendments. We have uh, to. Do we have to vote on each of these separately, or? Um, I would say let's go through them. And, and Joel, feel free to tell me if this is a bad idea, but. Um, if we go through all of them, um, we, might, we might be able to approve everything at once rather than voting on each of them individually. Yes, it, it's a good idea to, to go through them now, discuss them, and we can note any uh, changes to, the, um, to what staff has recommended. We can note that going along. And then when one of the commissioner at the end of the conversation after closing hearing uh, one of the commissioners, uh, the commissioner who offers to make a motion, we can all make sure that we get in all of the changes, if there are going to be any, to what is uh, what has been prepared previously. Thank you, Joel. Mm -hmm. Then next up that I have on the memo is outdoor so storage mm -hmm. and incidental display. Well, 
I'll speak. Hey, this was some where we had some questions in particular on incidental display. No, uh, I I did, but I I reread it again, and um, I have no issues with the proposed amendment. Any other comments from uh, any of the chairman or committee members, rather? No. None from Joseph. Harms okay. I agree with staff. More agrees with staff on this. Then it looks like um, we're okay with that one. Um, next up, I've got um, site distance triangle and easements. So I'm not sure um, if the commissioners had any questions or comments on that amendment. I don't think there, were, there was a discussion on that, was there? No, and it's necessary to have. And the only thing that I remember on that was for some of these, for instance, perhaps along the bike path or something like that, that it might be difficult to get, um, I think, the 20 foot um, uh, triangle uh, given smaller areas, but I, I don't think there was really any problems with that that I remember. <laughs> I, I wasn't at the meeting, but in the minutes, it talks about a question about bicyclists using sidewalks. It, I, I didn't really understand that discussion, but there was some discussion about that. Mm -hmm. my, my recollection of the discussion was that there was one, uh, one area talked about, and that was um, not requiring a sight distance triangle where there's an intersection that does not involve vehicles. So uh, sidewalk to sidewalk doesn't, well, the, the conversation was maybe not require the sidewalk, uh, the, the, the sight distance triangle where a sidewalk intersects a sidewalk or where a bike path intersects a bike path or a sidewalk only require them where a vehicle would intersect some other path, whether it's a walkway or a bike path. I'm, I'm not advocating for that. That was my recollection was a conversation that, that that could be an area to look at for potential change. And where I kind of visualize this is um, uh, down by the river where you can get to the to the islands you've got the baseball field down there you're going to have a sidewalk from the parking lot um, that goes down toward the river with the bike path intersecting that so an intersection like that i think the question was whether or not um, uh, the 20-foot the triangle was was needed there well so, staff that, has I, staff has drafted this so that the, uh, the vision triangle would be needed. Um, bicyclists can be traveling quite fast. They may not see pedestrians all that well. Um, where sidewalks intersect sidewalks, again, we, while we discourage bicycles to be using sidewalks, very often they do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially small kids, right, in neighborhoods that yep. are also not paying attention sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if commissioners want to chime in on whether or not um, we're good with this as written by staff or if you know, pedestrian slash bike sidewalk to sidewalk, um, if we're, you know, would want to change anything. So. If I can add one thing, this is not something that I would anticipate mobilization of staff to sweep the neighborhoods and require changes. If a problem were ever to arise at one of these intersections and we find that there is an obstruction, then we can uh, have the, either the city take care of it if it's in the right of way or a property owner take care of it. We have something in the code to require it. I would think you would hear uh, take action on a lot of these things uh, more likely if suddenly you were getting complaints about issues. Um, 
I guess going through this, Tom, um, are, are you okay with this as written by staff or would you prefer to see a change? No, I, I think I'm the one that questioned it before and, and you know, with the dialogue we've had and given some opportunity to think it through, I, I think it's fine. I, so, I agree, you're not gonna go through and police. I mean, I go walk through my neighborhood and find probably half a dozen situations that wouldn't meet this, but you know, we're not going to go and police those situations. And, you know, I think uh, where bike uh, trails intersect pedestrian walks, it makes a lot of sense. And obviously any vehicular, uh, you know, intersections with pedestrians or bikes makes a lot of sense. Great. Um, Sue, how about you? Yes, yes, I'm okay with this. I assume our staff has done its research and uh, this is uh, something that has, is used and been somewhat successful in other communities. And there must be something that's kind of standard for this. So yeah, I, I don't see right now, as we said, if there comes a problem down the road, then I think then that's when it'll be addressed. Uh -huh, down the road. Yeah, uh, pardon the pun. See what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joan, how about you? Well, um, I'm in agreement with it because I have, an, I have a place where I find a difficulty when I'm going, um, leaving my house and going up uh, Ridgelong Avenue to uh, Hart, Hart Road, that there's trees, evergreens, tall evergreens that really you have to pull out further than you should to see if anybody's coming. So, um, I would like to report that if this goes through and see what they, they can do anything about it. Sarah, how about you? I'm fine with it. What's bothering me is the next line down, parking for convenience retail use. Ah. Is that re <laughs> retail? <laughs> yeah. One would think that I could have corrected a typo, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's bothering me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you can be bothered with that shortly, but right now. Um, <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Um, and Amy? It's good for me. Okay, good. And I would agree. Um, especially bike paths and things like that, they do come up quickly. I think any precaution we can take uh, when we need it is, is, is great. Um, so now, uh, next up is parking supply for convenience, retail use, um, as opposed to retail. <laughs> yeah. So any comments from the commissioners on this, other than typos? It looks like all you're doing is just taking out the restaurant. Um. Oh, wait, is we're, that we're, the only real change? You're up with oh, the next. Yeah. yeah, let's let's do the parking thing first. Okay. Um, I have a problem with, with this, and I'm not sure who's what governing body has uh, jurisdiction here. But on our and you can help me with the name of our street there on North River Street, that Dutch name we have. Anybody remember? Work there. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> um, where? Are the, they close? The, it's the, the shared the shared street of North River right off of Wilson that we've had for several years. Oh, the Wooner. The Wooner. Thank sure. you. Yeah, That's Wooner. thank you. What uh Kazuntai. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um the street I I don't know why I've just noticed this, but it is impossible. There is no parking on the street. I understood it was supposed to be shared by cars and pedestrians as kind of a community experience. But um, just recently I tried to go in, I think it was to uh, uh, Katrina's, whatever, Avita store. And there was a woman in front of me, walking in front of me who was handicapped. And um, she had no place to park. She had had to walk quite a distance. It was a cold, cold day. And she said, I, I don't know where to park. And um, so I asked the people in Katrina's, do you know where your customers? No, they never thought of it. Well, we went out and looked at the signs and they're all signs that say no parking between signs. And when you come to the end of that, a particular sign, there's another sign that says no parking between signs. 
And there are literally only three or four parking spaces on that street in the first block uh, in front of uh, Evolution Winery and the tea shop. And that's it. And I just don't know how these retail, <laughs> and, and then of course there are the big planters um, all up and down the street. Um, why doesn't, isn't, aren't we supposed to have some sort of parking for handicap close by? Can I, uh, the can I interrupt just quickly? Can we just continue with these tax amendments and maybe in the okay. other section doesn't this of the have agenda? To do with, it doesn't have to do with convenience for retail use though? No, no, it doesn't. Okay. We can, we can get back to your point. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting then, but I thought it wasn't about wasn't this for like a gas station convenience store? It's yes, like in, parking, right? yes. Yeah. In in the old days, these were limited in size, but we haven't okay. seen gas stations building uh, uh, retail stores that are less than three thousand square feet. Okay, um, and this was really the simplest change to the code uh, to accommodate what we tip more typically see, which is a general retail building with gas stations. For the like record, I'm okay with this language. I'm okay with it also. More. Me too. This is harms. Yes, I'm okay too. Joseph uh, has a. Uh, there's a sentence in there in this paragraph that says a significant number of gas station retail customers are also gas customers who always park always park at the pump. Is there anybody that's going to enforce that and tell them to park up by the store? No. We're not going to do that. I guess the store owner can request that, but no, we have no jurisdiction over that. Because it's, that, that can, is a pain you can, when, when you're waiting for gas and somebody is know, you, out of their car. You can keep your car at the pump when you go into the store, or you can move it to the other parking. Either one, it's not a it's not a city code issue. It should be. <laughs> it's just a common sense. There's, there's, there's no nowhere, nobody to enforce it. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a common sense thing, right? <laughs> okay, I'm okay with it, except for that one line. <laughs> um, then it sounds like parking supply for convenience retail use, um, everyone's okay with. Um, next I have is the menu signage. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. More so okay with that. Mm -hmm. All we're doing here is just allowing menu signs to not be exclusive to drive-through restaurants only. This would now apply to every any kind of drive-through business. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, temporary signs, any comments on that? No. I don't remember any discussion on that one. Um, Rooming houses. Okay, we're all good with that. We can end the meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not so fast there, Joel. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> so, any comments or questions for staff or anything on the rooming houses? Not from me. Not from Joseph. None from Are there more. any in town? We, Are there any rooming houses we, in town? We suspect there may be. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, it, it has been brought to our attention that there may be. I'm not sure if we can consider that, quote, bringing to our attention, rising to the level of a complaint. But it, it, it was brought to our attention, and we discovered that our code really is not equipped to regulate these. Oh. And and we don't disallow them, so they would be de facto allowed. <laughs> I'm just thinking of uh, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> then, if there are no more questions or comments from the commissioners, because uh, I think if I'm correct, uh, the rooming houses is the, the last one on my memo. Um, right. Uh, Drew or Joel, have we received any communications, emails, anyone in the audience who wants to speak on this subject? 
I have not received any communications and uh, I don't see any participants here this evening. Or, oh, maybe I'm we, missing. Yeah, we, we do uh, have, yeah, we have uh, attendees still. So. Right. Um, I have not received any emails in advance of the hearing and I'll check, double check now just to make sure there aren't any new ones, but uh, that does not appear to be the case. And I'll remind the audience if anybody wishes to speak on this item, if they can raise their hand uh, using the Zoom hand raise button. And as we're waiting for that, as we've gone through it, now that uh, committee members have had a chance to review it, kind of digest it, um, I've got OK written next to each of these. Um, so, Drew, any hands raised? Uh, there are no hands being raised right now. Okay. Then I believe we would need a motion to close the public hearing. Is that correct, Joel? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyone like to make a motion to close the public this hearing? This is Harms. I move to close the public hearing. Joseph will second. Roll call, please. Harms? Yes. Joseph? Aye. Caslin? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Anna Lund? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Okay, great. Then I believe next up um, would be to uh, a motion to recommend approval of the changes, uh, re recommend approval to city council of the changes, amendments to the text of the zoning code um, as outlined in the staff memo dated March 11th, 2021. Joseph will so move. I'll second. Uh, roll call, please. Joseph? Aye. Gaslin? Aye. Moore? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Ann Harms? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Thank you. And I would like to say, I, I think this is a, a great example of how things should work. There can be a lot of material. Um, last meeting, we were able to take care of the really pressing issue and then give uh, the commissioners time to reflect on everything and uh, um, uh, make the decision uh, that they feel appropriate. So um, thank you. Any matters from the public? Drew or Joel? Just see, yeah, I'll just see if nobody, yeah, nobody's raising their hand to address the commission. All right, then any other business? I'm curious about Wazio's uh, building. I haven't seen any activity there. Uh, so I guess I can probably cover part of this. Um, they did file, or correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, did they file for the building permit? But um, prior to getting to the permit step, um, his bank has asked for him to subdivide the property. Uh, so he's preparing, working with a surveyor to create a plan of subdivision that will be eventually coming to you guys for review. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what building, what building are you referring to, Tom? Main uh, building on uh, Wil West Wilson, Wilson, Wilson Street. Wilson Street, yeah. 900 block of Wilson Street. The that was the Onyx. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that's been a while now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was permit reviewed, permit was pretty, pretty late in the permit review stages when this issue with the subdivision came up. So he's... Uh, Pretty far along with the uh, with the review of the permit, but we're waiting, as Drew said, on the subdivision stuff. Okay. The bank lawyers to blame. It's a big lot. Well, it looks like a double lot, or, or um, he he wants to divide it. Well, the the intention was that uh, basically there were two two potential lots on that property, mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Wazio was going to develop the first lot without a subdivision. Uh, and uh, now as he's been securing his financing and so forth, it's been requested that he subdivide the property now uh, to create that lot by the bank. So. Okay. So you would need to it. subdivide it in order to get the permit now? Is that an issue or just is that just the 
financing. Bank. Uh, it's financing. So okay. it's, it's not our requirement. It's it's. And it's not holding up the permit. Oh, it, well, yes and no, because he hasn't addressed all the final issues with it. Uh, he can't get his letters of credit, which are required for the permit, and a few other oh, things okay. that are required until gotcha. he uh, does what they ask. Yeah. Kind of a catch-22 for him. Right. And I know he's working on it, but um, once we have that, then we'll be able to start our review on that. How about the Culver's? Permit was just filed yesterday. Okay. Oh, good, good. I, I see Starbucks and Chipotle are coming along nicely. Mm -hmm. Gonna be a smorgasbord out there for us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. You West choose, Siders. Choose one from each menu. Yeah. <laughs> Not for us East Siders. We have no, to we drive. Always, we always have to go to Geneva or St. Charles. Now we don't have to anymore. Right. Mm hmm. There was a there was a big story in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago about the people that have purchased the um, old um, hangar, is it called, over in the VFW property. Uh, we don't have it. We don't have anything to do with that, do we? As he's going to open up an entertainment venue or a. Uh, I, well, they're fair, I, they're fairly late in the remodeling stage. Um, as a matter okay. of fact, they're supposed to open the first week of May. So. Uh, oh, is that right? Okay very late mm -hmm. in the remodeling stage. They're just about finished. Oh, okay. It sounded very elaborate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have an update item. Uh, last meeting, uh, uh, the commission recommended uh, zoning code text amendments regarding electronic changeable message signs. Uh, the city council uh, committee of the whole reviewed those changes and they did agree with the recommendation per the plan commission but they continued their conversation and it will come up again next month. Um, there was some conversation about, um, uh, about throwing in or adding a distance from residential requirement, uh, a distance from residential uses requirement for these kinds of signs. There was also conversation about banning electronic changeable message signs oh, completely please. throughout the city. And there was oh. also conversation about banning them in commercial areas, allowing them in. <sighs> if you remember, the text amendment was to add them to industrial areas. We already allow them in commercial, commercial districts. And the, the mm -hmm. text amendment was to add them to industrial. Well, the, the, the cow had some conversation about, well, maybe we should be removing them from, in, instead of citywide, maybe removing them from commercial areas. So there was a lot of things left on the table and they just continued mm -hmm. their review of your recommendation. And now they may be adding some more things, but they did like what you had recommended regarding the operational size, the operational requirements, things like that. Good. How about any update on in-person meetings? <laughs> yes. Uh, the, we, we are, it, it I, it, we have been committed to uh, uh, going with the governor's orders where if, if hybrid or remote only meetings are allowed, uh, we've continued to do that. I think the current go governor's order extends to near the end of the month or April 30th. April 30th. April 30th. And we don't know what the governor's next order is going to be. The governor lifted, yep. uh, lifted mask requirements some ask requirements statewide. I don't know if that's a, a pointing in the direction of how he may go with hybrid meetings. Can't we bypass the governor? <laughs> uh, well, the, the governor isn't mandating these. It, it, it's been a policy decision of the city to, to have hybrid or remote only meetings. Mm -hmm. And we're not, it's not a mandate, but we are doing the hybrid meeting for the city council because we have the infrastructure for hybrid meetings for the city council. We don't really have that for the, uh, for the plan commission. So it's one or the other. It's, it's either remote or all in person. We'll know no more next month. Won't you have to make a decision on our next meeting in May for a notification before the end uh, of May when he might change that? Well, uh, one more one more update. We are going to be canceling the meeting on May fourth. Okay. So the next meeting we will have will be May 
18th, I think. 18th, May 18th. And by then the governor order, we will have either had another governor order or we won't. So by the time we schedule that meeting, it's most likely we will know whether it will be remote only or in person only. And with the most recent, or actually for tonight's meeting, we did have language that uh, basically if they signed, if somebody signed up for the meeting and it did go into in person, we would, they would receive an email because of the, because of signing up. So we at least had a mechanism if we did change over. So we, we may do that with the next notice, depending on when it goes out relative to the uh, okay. May 18th meeting. All right. So no meeting on the fourth. Correct. Yep. Okay. And I see we have uh, John Green attending, and I just want to let John know that MOCA was approved for the design review and recommended for approval for the conditional use. Just so I see, I believe his firm was involved with preparing plans for that project. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the, they were the engineering. Engineering for MOCA. For MOCA. Great. Any other business? Uh, so, well, for May 18th, we, the, uh, we would be having the Bell Tire, which would be the uh, lot south of Chipotle uh, in the Avenue Marketplace. Oh, oh okay. Hmm. Another good. tire place. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you tired of tires? I'm tired. <laughs> Tires and, <laughs> tires and mattresses, they go together. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I move we close the meeting. Second. Have a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Have a nice month. We'll see you guys Ooh. next month. Bye-bye. All righty. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.